the chat. And now it's time for our small talk roundtable. This has been, as you can see, an action-packed conference. And we thought we would end with some small talk because equals about small. I'd like to introduce our panelists. So if you can wave when I see your name, because you're all uh, over my screen. Marcy Birchfield. Marcy, hi. She's a VP Economic Blueprint Institute with the Toronto Region Board of Trade. Great job. Sherry Colburn. Sherry. Hi, Sherry. President and CEO of Spark Centre. Joanne Tudeko. Joanne. There you are. The CEO, our, our founder of the Canadian Women's Network, which is an incredible organization. And Rocco Rossi, who I listen to on the radio all the time, finally gets to your face. CEO of the Ontario Chamber of Commerce. And Tanika, uh, Tanika or Tanika, if I've said it wrong, uh, McLeod, co-founder of Minute Skill. I mean, what, an, what an, a great assortment of skills and people on this panel. So we're going to have an open discussion on solutions and opportunities for small business to overcome the problems and issues they face and get to the next level. I'd like to pose an open question. So here it is. We have a situation where many businesses are struggling due to the pandemic. Hey, did you know that we've been in a pandemic for two years? Anybody clue into that? We have a cross section of panelists across government agencies through to private industry. And what resources should founders be aware of in the ecosystem that could help them and they may not necessarily know about? So that is our question. I'll read it again. What resources should founders be aware of in the ecosystem that, sorry, that could help them that they may not necessarily know about? And I should put my glasses on, but I'm just too darn vain right now. Okay, Marcy, <laughs> let's start with you. Would you like sure. to take it on that first question? Yeah, sure. So thank you for having me, Barry. Thank you for the invitation. Good to see you again. And uh, congratulations on, uh, on this great conference. It sounds like it's been very successful uh, today. Um, so I guess, so I represent um, the 11,500 members of the Toronto Region Board of Trade, and I'm going to start by saying that, that uh, you know, local chambers and of commerce and local boards of trade are an excellent um, resource for small for small businesses um, and you know we do everything from you know advocacy on behalf of business you know from issues as, as issues that that may affect your operations you know land use land use and transportation planning issues that you know deal with getting employees to your place of work um, issues with um, dealing with you know uh, um, remote work essentially you know all all of these are sort of policy issues that have policy advocacy lends to them and um, and local chambers of commerce and um, and particularly our chamber of commerce that we really uh, work to to create networks and I think I'm sure Rocco will talk a little bit about this too um, you know from one of the things that uh, our CEO did when she first became the CEO of the Toronto Region Board of Trade was uh, was start a network across Canada of large major um, uh, metro chambers uh, that have kind of s different issues from maybe rural uh, chambers of commerce and then also uh, a, our a network of local uh, our biggest local chambers in what we call the innovation corridor to advocate on behalf of, of policy issues that really connect um, uh, people and jobs and uh, and businesses across the the innovation corridor, but the other thing that local chambers do um, and you know and bigger chambers do is provides kind of support programs as well. So you know everything from if you're if you're a small business and you're looking to grow and expand um, and scale, you know offering programs to to teach you how to trade, to introduce you to trade markets. Um, the Toronto Region Board of Trade does a lot of that with its um, World Trade Center uh, Toronto arm. So uh, and I, and I think in the pandemic we really realized how. Uh, important these uh, these networks are right because we had governments you know creating programs everything from CERB to you know the um, the, uh, the the you know the rent from subsidy program some of it some of which didn't land right um, you know when it went into the market and so they use these these networks like the chambers of commerce uh, to really fine tune some of the programs and the way that those chambers uh, tap into its members is by surveys and that so we get feedback on what's working what are the pain points of members 
and then provide that to uh, higher levels of government to really fine tune some of these programs. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop there, but I think it's really programs and advocacy that a lot of these uh, uh, local chambers and boards of trades can, can offer small businesses. And how does somebody get involved with the, the uh, Toronto Board of Trade? Yeah, so you can become a member, you can come to events, um, there's there's all sorts of sort of, you know, there's young professional networks that we have, all sorts of networks within the Board of Trade. So, but I, I would start by, you know, by some of the events that we hope to get back, you know, in person, uh, you know, as, yeah. as things open up more, more regularly. Yeah, you know, I think everybody wants to, but I still think a lot of people are a little bit nervous of uh, getting out there because we just, it's so complicated, it's so confusing. <sighs> But we'll I think people need to know also that other markets are opening up more broadly than Canada is. It's and so fun. we, so, uh, you know, I just coming back from the States, like, not that, you know, that is a great example, but I, I think Canada needs to think about how, uh, look at themselves compared to other markets to kind of gauge what's happening. Absolutely. I'm with you 100%. Okay, Rocco, so you represent over 60,000 businesses. So what are your thoughts to share with entrepreneurs? Uh, well, Marcy did a, a fabulous job, um, whether it's a board of trade or a chamber of commerce. Beyond the advocacy, though, and the policy, which is fantastic, and the Blueprint uh, Institute is, is really uh, best in class that I really encourage people to follow their reports. But in some respects, and particularly for small businesses, even more important, is networking with other business people. I mean, Tiana was telling her story of, you know, borrowing and 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 or stealing from other companies. You know, being able, being at an event and talking to someone else who's going through what you're going through yeah. is enormous. I mean, it's far better than a website. It's far better than uh, than reading a report. It gives you that real street smarts. Uh, that is so crucial. So I, I never underestimate um, that value that a local chamber and board of trade comes from because I really believe in, in the wisdom of others. And, and let's be clear about a couple of things. Number one, you know, Renda, you, you made the point, like we've been living through this uh, pandemic for two years. Let's be clear that there's been a tale of two Ontarios, two Canadas through all of this, because quite frankly, if you've been in technology, in essential services, in finance, in a number of bigger operations, uh, yes, you've had difficulties and bumps on the road, but you've done quite well. And in fact, if you've been in technology, you've done extremely well because so many businesses had to uh, speed up their plans around technology. But if you were in tourism, in hospitality, in restaurants, in personal services, gyms, live music, you've been kicked in the teeth from the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Um, and, and you are having a tough time coming back. And yes, we have to look at, you know, how other markets are reopening. But let's understand that you know, getting back to normal or, or opening up doesn't mean forgetting what we've learned. I mean, we still want to be encouraging people to get their booster shots, to, you know, to use in, in uh, high volume uh, areas still, it kind of makes sense and is respectful of others to use a mask. And um, I mean, look at when, when cars suddenly arrived on the scene and there were lots of early accidents, people didn't say, let's go back to before and eliminate accidents or let's let her rip. I mean, we had seat belts and we had speed limits and we had stop signs. So let's do it in a way that um, is respectful and as safe as possible, understanding that risk is not going to be zero but that's going to be important. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the issue of funding comes up again and again and again. And we uh, at the OCC uh, put out a report just a little while ago called Capital is Key. It's at the OCC.ca uh, site in our reports. And I highly recommend that because it also has a listing of a number of government programs and services to access 
Um, and aside from pulling together this great conference, obviously Barry and the ECO work um, around bringing together uh, angel investors, other forms of investing um, that go above and beyond necessarily what maybe your local bank or credit union might do um, is a great is a great place um, to start as well. You know, Rocco, I think a lot of um, uh, small businesses and, and founders, especially founders, because, I, and I love your, you know, there are two, two classes of, of uh, business groups in, in uh, Ontario and Canada, it's so true. I've, we've all seen that. But if, if uh, someone, again, someone's listening right now and, and they're, they're starting on their journey, um, I, I don't necessarily think they think that the Chamber of Commerce is a place that they can go to. I think there's an intimidation about that or that, well, I'm just, a, you know, a small business or uh, I, I, I don't have, you know, much going on right now, but you're so right. The networking is critical for people and we haven't had that for two years. You know, it, it's been lacking. It is, it is your MBA. It is your university college of business because you are learning uh, from the school of hard knocks of other people going through the same stuff you're going through. Yeah. So the pitch is, if you're listening right now, contact your local chamber of commerce and, and just find out what's, and, and there's so many things that you offer too. You know, you, you give uh, discounts on insurance policies, so many things that I don't think people really are aware. So that, that I think is really um, a big pitch for, for the chamber side. So I love the chamber you're, here. You're bang on. I mean, the insurance program is probably our most uh, yeah. used program across the, the country, and it allows small businesses to, um, to access great health benefits at a very reasonable price mm -hmm. that doesn't jump around from year to year because you pool the risk across all of because the canadian chamber is also involved in this so it's not just our sixty thousand businesses yeah. in ontario it's a couple hundred thousand businesses across the country yeah. that then pool that risk to get you great buying power on a number of things which is key not just for your health and your families but also for attracting and retaining people because very often Big companies have an advantage over you in terms of deep pockets and what they can offer. So this gives you a suite of, of benefits at a reasonable price to help you get in the game. Yeah, great advice. Sherry, I'd like to, to go to you now and, and tell us about Spark Center. Yeah, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to give a, a shout out there to Rocco because, you know, the Chambers of Commerce, I mean, Spark Center uh, you know, although we are one of the 17 regional innovation centers, the reality is, you know, we're still small and we use the Chamber of Commerce Benefits Program because it is second to none. And uh, I just, you know, I can't say enough about it. Uh, it has been a tremendous force for us attracting talent and retaining talent. So, um, yeah, kudos to uh, uh, to the, the chambers for doing what you do, because it's uh, so beneficial. It doesn't matter how big or small you are. Amazing. Um, you know, I think the thing that I hear most uh, from entrepreneurs when I'm out is, and I'm sure most of you have heard this, I didn't know that. I didn't <laughs> know you existed. How come I didn't hear about you before? And here we all are, you know, marketing ourselves to death. Um, but, you know, there's just entrepreneurs, I think by their DNA, are head down, beavering away, trying to get stuff done. And so, um, I think what, you know, Canada and Ontario have in particular is we have this wonderful layering. Um, so we have the chambers uh, and then we have the regional innovation uh, network, which is the network that I belong to. Now we're very focused on tech and innovation companies. So not the, not just, uh, you know, family businesses or dated, you know, kind of main street businesses, but we all play together. And we all need each other because for every tech company that comes to Spark, you know, guess what? We still need to go out at lunch. We still need to eat. We still need to get our clothes dry cleaned. We still want to go have a drink on a patio. And so there's, to me, that's the ecosystem. It's a huge ecosystem and, and it's a healthy one. But um, I think where, where we play in that layering, um, the regional innovation centers, uh, you know, first and foremost, are focused on tech and innovation, and and how we sort of define that is really companies 
that have this ambition for scaling, right? So they, they are going to go through the other layering piece, which is the funding and investment piece, which uh, we heard about a little earlier today and how challenging that can be. Um, but what we do is we provide, um, you know, we provide connections, we provide co-working space. So people who particularly, when you think of, um, you know, pandemic and post-pandemic, Everybody's got a real focus on cost uh, containment. Obviously, we're trying to make sure our burn rates are low and we're really um, uh, keeping our, our cost uh, infrastructure as small as possible. Um, so the regional innovation centers are great because they offer you co-working space. So, you know, you don't have to pay prime time rent for, you know, a, a building. Uh, you can come and, and uh, at least in Sparks model, uh, we actually provide desks for free still. So that's a, you know, that's a, a big blessing. We also provide connections to, you know, advisors and mentors and, and all the layers of investors, right from grants coming out of the, the government to, you know, to private investors, uh, angel investors, VCs, so the whole, the whole layer. Um, and, you know, we also have, you know, skills development for all the entrepreneurs around sales and marketing and, um, uh, yeah, everything, uh, financing, you know, how, how to read financial statements, how to prepare a financial statement, uh, why they're even important, um, particularly when you go talk to an investor, you know, you, you should have your, you should have your paperwork in order. Um, and I think, you know, the, I think that the challenge for entrepreneurs is that there are truly a lot of, um, there's a lot of, supports available and so it's a kind of a sea of can be a sea of overwhelmingness I mean where do you go where and and one of the things that we're doing at Spark Center that's a little bit different um, than has been done in other areas is we're spearheading this um, initiative called the Eastern Ontario Innovation Corridor and what that really enables us to do is become kind of a one-stop shop we have a variety of assets all the way down the Eastern Ontario Corridor um, but rather than an entrepreneur having to like figure it all out and go one by one by one by one through these um, searching for these assets we've taken it upon ourselves to become that sort of centralized concierge uh, and just help people get to the places they need to go. So if you come to Spark because you heard about us before you heard about someone else, and let's say you're at 5 million and you've got ambitions to scale, you know, to 50 million or 100 million, you know, I'm probably going to tap my friends at Invest Ottawa and say, hey, you know, Sonia, over to you. I've got, I've got a scaling company here for you. And, you know, can we, can we get them the supports they need? as quickly as possible because that's that's the name of the game you know quick quick wins the race in uh, yeah. in entrepreneurism yeah fantastic so a lot of resources there and i love the idea of another innovation corridor i think we should have them all across canada we should be connected that Agreed. should be our new railroad you know Agreed. But we're, we are so um you know there's a lot of uh, picking and choosing of where financing go it goes still <clears> i find and um i'll probably maybe it's not politically correct to say this, but I sometimes, uh, I've seen it, is um, kind of who's in the sandbox and who's uh, the cool kid. Yeah. And um, that's that's challenging, but luckily there are with groups like you and, and the, the group of you around the table who can kind of help smooth that out and get rid of the, the choosiness of everything. So okay, I'll, I won't be any more politically. <laughs> well, that, that's a good that's a good uh, soundbite because I mean, uh, us in the eastern uh, you know hemisphere of the province will tell you that you know most of the money goes downtown and and of course west because of the water wonderful Waterloo Toronto corridor, exactly. but um, but you know uh, every uh, region of Ontario should be holding their own. Um, we shouldn't be reliant upon Toronto and and the west. It has to be a you know all in game, and that's where uh, agreed. I think the funding for Eastern Ontario and developing a corridor in Eastern Ontario is very important. Absolutely, now we've got to stop our, our Canadian silos of mistrust, and we've got to work still with with you know the provincial and federal governments on breaking down how our trade barriers within the country. For goodness sakes, it's, I can't believe we're still talking about stuff like that. All right, I'll get off my um, my soapbox. Tanika, is it Tanika or Tanika? Tanika. I knew I was wrong. <laughs> Tanika. 
Please go. Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, you know, I had some some thoughts from you know the perspective of a founder, uh, early stage, uh, non traditional background. You know, I haven't I haven't gotten the traditional uh, business education, and um, we actually started our startups. Um, at, well, I've had a few different startup ideas that I've worked through, and we actually started our first right before the pandemic. Um, the latest minute skill, which is um, by far my favorite, it's gotten the furthest, um, was started uh, not that long ago, just over um, a year ago. And in our experience, much to um, what Rocco was saying about the different experiences during this pandemic, um, you know, it helped us actually connect a lot more because everything was remote. And so we could gain access to a lot more people. Um, without having to be in person. Um, so there were some uh, benefits to um, having everything remote for our team, being able to remote uh, work entirely remote. The idea that having an office space is not necessarily something you need to budget for um, in your earliest stages now. It's, it's more traditional to have co-working spaces or remote teams. So there were some benefits, but there are still um, a lot of challenges that we need to be wary of. And so I think these might be tips more generally for entrepreneurship, not just in the context of a pandemic, but there are challenges always. Um, as an entrepreneur, I think, you know, 99% of our job is solving problems in our day to day, right? Um, and so I think it's really important for entrepreneurs from the, from the get go, especially young entrepreneurs who don't have the experience to tell them this uh, in the beginning is um, to, to get real about the situation that we're in. Um, and I think more specifically to understand how challenging it is to be an entrepreneur and to start a business and to not assume that it's going to be easier than we think. Just because, you know, we see other uh, businesses and hear these other success stories, we think, oh, that happened overnight. I never heard of them before. And now look at them now, you know. Um, so the idea here is to just be critical, um, to understand that there are aspects of our society that are structurally uh, unequal, right? And some aspects that are intentional. And so no matter, and especially depending on your social location, no matter how much effort you put, sometimes that doesn't equate to um, the, the same outcomes as others. So to get right about that situation, I think um, in the beginning is really important. And following that, um, because we know this about our society, because we know this, especially about business um, and especially in the tech ecosystem, build a community around you to help you through these challenges. Because not only, I mean, if you're um, a person like myself, a young racialized woman in the business and tech space, there are structural barriers that um, will be, you know, far more challenging to get over than the everyday business challenges. And so the more you can build up a community around you um, to help you learn through that and overcome those barriers, I think the better off you'll be. And in my experience, um, in the beginning, we were very shy to reach out to uh, small business centers, chamber of commerce, um, accelerators and incubators. We just didn't feel like, well, firstly, we didn't know what we would get out of it. But secondly, we also didn't feel like we were part of that ecosystem. And so for anybody who feels that way, um, especially if you're very early stage, um, remember that everyone feels that kind of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And so the best way to get over that yeah, is to, you know, immerse yourself in that community yeah. of other people who felt the same way. Um, and so I really do want to emphasize to build a community around yourself, um, seek out these uh, business centers, the Chamber of Commerce, um, like so many of my panelists have been saying, um, their job is to connect you and to support you. Um, so definitely do that. And my last piece of advice here is um, to never stop learning, really. Um, the whole job is to learn. As soon as you reach one stage or achieve one um, phase or milestone, you have a whole new world in front of you that you need to learn. And that I think is true for anyone who has that professional degree. Like I have some founder friends with MBAs who are just as lost as I am with some things. <laughs> and then you have folks like me who have you know, a criminology degree, a political science degree, and social or socio-legal studies degree. So completely different from, you know, MinuteSkill, which is a social learning app. Um, but, you know, all the same, we, we come to this with fresh eyes. We've never done this before. And so you have to constantly be learning because your context is changing. Mm -hmm. um, and so for that, I, um, 
I actually want to want to mention something that Tiana mentioned, you know, how sometimes she look at other businesses and sometimes she's not sure if, you know, is that stealing? Is that all right? And I actually would really strongly encourage people to do that. I think that if you're in an area um, like, for instance, we're in social learning, um, this combines, you know, social media kind of uh, engagement and e-learning. We need to master those two spaces, right? We need to know all of the big figures who played in those spaces and what they did and their successes, their challenges. So you actually really want to study your competitors and similar companies and um, people who have done it before you. Um, of course, double check all information you find on the internet. We all know that. But I think it's really important to never stop learning um, in your journey. And I find whenever I start to feel stagnant, it's because I've somehow become disconnected from my learning journey along the way. So, um, I mean, those are not necessarily specific to the pandemic. I think when things get tough, you just need to lean on your community. You need to lean on your learning resources um, and also just always stay um, clear on the situation that you're in. It's not going to be as easy as you think. I think it's never as easy as we think it's going to be. And so sometimes just having that um, awareness can really help you navigate those challenges in the first place. Wow, wonderful advice. So, so true. You know, people with MBAs to me, it, it, you, uh, that's great, but you need life skills and, and you got to, you got to figure things out uh, just by experience them, which is exactly what you're saying. And it's so, so true. All right, Joanne, who is the founder of the Canadian Women's Network. I know you've got some great advice and, and we've got about five minutes left. So, uh, wow. I, I thought this, pan I, we just need another hour or so to talk about this, but Barry said no next time. I so think just fun. like share all the links out. So yes, they are. Yeah. I'm going to say yes to what everybody said. And because yeah. um, I couldn't agree more with all of the, um, the resources that are out there. Um, I'm going to say also like, so think about local, but also as everybody that knows me, think about global. There are so many great resources across Canada. I love the idea of the Canada corridor. Not sure why we haven't done it really yet. Truly, I know I know several have tried and several are doing in some ways, but you know, when you're outside of Canada, people are amazing. They expect us to be connected. <laughs> they expect the, the cities, the mayors to talk, you know, the different regions to talk to each other. Um, and we, the founders and entrepreneurs have so much to benefit from. If you sit in Alberta where I am today, Day and you know, connected to you know Halifax or into Victoria. Um, so I'm going to rattle off a bunch of like programs and organizations that I love because they're going to give you a bit of a flavor for things. So there's everything from like women's entrepreneurship in Saskatchewan. I think it's called WESC. Um, you've got SheBoot in Ottawa. You've got Fierce Founders out of Waterloo. You've got Propel out of Edmonton. You've got this amazing group called Women's Equity Lab, which is a new investment model um, that started out of Victoria that have chapters in Vancouver, um, Okanagan, Toronto, and Winnipeg is coming online. And some of you might think, well, but those are investors. Um, but what great access and resources investors are. So you don't just have to chum around your entrepreneurs. You can actually go and find those others in those ecosystem um, for you as well. The Canadian government and the consulates are amazing in cities outside of Canada as you need them. They're great in Canada, but um, if you're going to San Francisco or Chicago or Beijing, these organizations, the groups really, really help you a lot. Um, find organizations and groups that are within kind of your industry. So there's like women in mining, women in fintech, women in agritech. Find those. Um, find others that are, again, maybe alumni groups and networks through accelerators and programs participating in something like CDL in the Rockies might be really great for a company in Toronto um, region. Um, find things also um, that like Actually, if you can't find things, build your own. That's going to be my other statement. <laughs> Go find those networks and put something together yourself. It's easy enough to like throw a Zoom together or throw a happy hour, or bring, bring some folks together in that if you're not finding it or if you just want to augment it. Um, we, of course, have our women's, um, women's network where um, female entrepreneurs can join and it's pan Canadian and we connect them into our network of um, US and global advisors and investors and mentors and executives there so we're a big fan of like connecting out um, into like global regions as well 
Um, and I think that's all that I'll say on that. We don't have that much time. I've really appreciated being here. And, you know, I think the idea of that, Tanika, what you said, you know, just building that community because days are really hard. Um, don't plan a one year, you know, plan for your business, build a five year plan. Um, take it slow, focus one thing at a time. I know it's really hard, but you'll get there longer, faster if you do it that way. Wow. Thanks, Brenda. Okay. So We've got a few more minutes and um, let's do just a quick lightning round. So um, what are your top three things of advice that you'd give to somebody sitting here right now who's kind of overwhelmed with what's happening to them and they don't know what to do next? What would you suggest they do? Rocco. Um, I think uh, Tanika put it uh, best. Uh, be a sponge, um, be willing to continuously learn. Um, and reach out and network. Um, you know, your problems are problems that other people are facing right now or have faced. So there are solutions. Um, and, um, you know, you, you want to go uh, fast, go by yourself. You want to go far, uh, go with others. Great. Yeah, great advice. Marcy. Yeah, I would say network, network, network. Right. Like, I, I think uh, it's a common theme. Uh, you hear about all these resources that are available to you uh, as an entrepreneur. And that's how, you know, that's how you 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 you, you get the wind at, at the back, you know, of the sales, I, I think, is, is through a broader network. And so that's that's what my my advice would be. Love it. Tanika, you got any more to give to us? Yeah, I mean, everything my panelists have said um, has been so helpful. I think, honestly, when you're overwhelmed, you just need to connect with people just to reiterate, don't be afraid to connect with people. Sometimes I think, especially as a young entrepreneur, you feel like you might not be in a good position to speak to somebody who's more experienced, that they might mm -hmm. find it laughable or something like that. Um, don't feel that way because most people are extremely happy to help. Um, like we've all said, don't, don't try to reinvent the wheel. Others have done it. Learn from others. Um, and if you ever do get a response that is unkind, that's just not a person you want to work with. And maybe there will be those people that you encounter, but that's not the entirety of networking. Um, yeah. ma the majority of people will be helpful and will want to help you because, you know, like even myself being an early stage, we haven't accomplished much, but we have accomplished getting to our pre-seed I would love to just share everything I've ever learned with as many early stage founders as possible. I think that's just a natural um, part of being an entrepreneur, being a business owner. So don't be afraid to reach out. Wonderful. Sherry. Yeah, I, I'm going to say network and uh, I'm going to say focus on sales, right? It, it is easy as a young entrepreneur in particular to get busy doing really fun stuff yes. like networking and like connecting. Um, but you, you have to be very intentional about your sales. Uh, as we all know, it doesn't matter if you're small or big, cash is king. Um, and sales is the best way to get cash. So forget the investment, it will come. But if you got revenue, everybody wants to give you some money. So focus on cash. Good, great advice. And finally, Joanne. Find your core team, those people that have your back that you can call because it's um, many, many hard days and life is hard in general. And then you're going to start a business on top of that. Um, so just know who's your 411 or your 911 that's out there and really rely on them and know that they're there for you and they want to be there for you um, and use them a lot. Wow, you guys, what, what, a, what, a, what a round table. So Marcy, Sherry, Joanne, Rocco and Tanika, thank you so much. Um, I wish we could talk longer. There's so much that we, we should be discussing, but I want to thank you for your time and your sharing your experience. And um, wow, we've all gotten so much from you. It's been great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.